Hello, my friends, and welcome. I'm Cheryl, and this is your Journey Yoga. We're going to do a little different something today. We're going to work on some fascia release. Um, so fascia is a wonderful fibrous tissue within your body, one of the many that, or one of the several, I should say, um, that really helps you uh, work comfortably, um, but it can also kind of get tangled up. So it's this uh, connective tissue that runs along all your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments. Um, and as we're younger, uh, it has this amazingly well hydrated system that just slides among each other and really helps us um, move efficiently and safely. And as we either if we get injured or as we age, um, that fascia can really get entangled and cause some issues as far as pain, discomfort, misalignment, um, that kind of thing. So uh, we're going to do some yoga poses today, very gentle yoga poses, um, props if you need them. So if you have a tendency, if you're really, really tight or if you do have um, pain in your joints or any part of your body, uh, when we come into these poses, just use bolsters, blankets, pillows, um, and I'll give you those cues uh, where, to, where to put them and how to use them and that kind of thing. Um, I also have a foam roller and several balls. So smaller balls, um, tennis balls, lacrosse balls, if you actually have a fascia release or a um, massage ball, those are fantastic. So um, take a second and grab whatever you need. Uh, and then come back. If you don't have a foam roller, um, they are amazing and life-changing and can be kind of mean at times. There are different um, densities, different uh, intensities. So density and intensity kind of go hand in hand. Uh, so the more dense it is, uh, the deeper the uh, massage will be. So that's kind of rule of thumb. So grab what you need. Uh, make sure you've got some water handy and uh, let's get started. So we're going to start with some gentle fascia release and then we're going to get into some of the um, yoga poses and then we'll get back to some more of the fascia release. So to start, we're going to take a nice ball. Okay. I've got a tennis ball here, massage ball. It's um, about the same size as a lacrosse ball, but it's not quite as firm. So this is a really nice one. If you're super, super, super tight, I would recommend this guy. Um, if you're feeling really, really good, I've got a lacrosse ball here too. So we are actually going to start with our feet. So um, you can do this standing or you can do this sitting. Um, so if you feel pretty good, stand and you're going to put some weight on your feet. I'm just going to put this ball right in the arch of my foot and I'm going to push. And I'm going to push as hard as I can push into the floor. And I'm just going to roll it side to side, front and back. And then I'm going to slowly work it in to kind of just into my feet, to the ball of the foot, and then actually between the toes. And I'm just going to push and I'm going to roll side to side. Now, as we do fascia release, you don't have to go super fast, right? So if it feels better to have it go slower and you're going to cross. So cross fibering, you might notice that there's kind of this chunky feeling going across the tendons and the muscles. That's a good indication that you've got some, some of this going on with the fascia. And uh, as we work it more, it's going to fix itself in one time. But if you're consistent, like everything I always say, consistency is everything, um, you will start to feel less pain. You're going to increase the hydration as now the knots are kind of getting more minimal and they're starting to work themselves out. They will get, the fascia will get more hydrated and have this ability to slide once again. Um, that's kind of the hope, the goal. So we're going to do both feet. Again, you might find that one foot holds a little bit more tension, um, has a little bit more of that entanglement. Uh, just take your time. So if you are a hardcore runner, if you walk and hike and you're on your feet just all the time, you're probably going to find a fair amount. If you've ever dealt with plantar fasciitis, I have, it's not fun. Um, this is a great thing to help keep that at bay. Awesome. It also will help kind of alleviate that. So if you really work on it and you don't want to overdo guys, this is just showing some love. There is so much of a thing is too much of a good thing, right? So we want to make sure that we're not doing that too much of a good thing. Perfect. All right. So with those feet, we're going to work down into the calf. Okay. So if you need to switch out the balls, switch out the balls. So with our calves, 
you can work with the foam roller too, as we will do. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. So I'm just placing the ball below the calf. And you can go mid-belly, you can go higher, you can start to go lower. And I'm just going to start to lift my bottom a little bit to put more pressure on my calf. And yes, indeed, you will find some things that you didn't even know you had going on. And I'm just going to roll side to side. I'm going to go up and down. So as we go along the muscle fiber, might not feel so bad. <laughs> Don't you love I say so bad? So, but as we start to cross fiber, so you're going across the muscle fiber. Oh yeah. And you can also do this. So just sliding back and forth. And you can also just roll as you slide back and forth. So now you're doing kind of a cross fibering as you go up and down. Just notice what you feel. Hopefully it feels good. This self massaging technique guys, and you can always switch out the balls too. Okay. So again, we don't want to overdo. So, you know, make sure you get the whole backside, right? Mid belly, lower calf. Keeping that core strong to support as we have that bottom lifted and we're going to work to the other side. So if you're really feeling fantastic, you can extend the leg. You can cross all. Oh, so by adding that extra weight, maybe you don't want to lift your bottom. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a doozy. So I'm using this foot, the knee is bent just so I can lift my bottom and be able to kind of roll back and forth. But you can also, if you find a spot where you're like, oh, and it makes you kind of almost want to cry, don't cry, but almost kind of maybe stay there, release and cross. Mm, pointing, flexing your feet that can change things up. So just play with it a little bit. Make sure you're getting that whole calf mid belly high and lower. You're getting that cross fiber as well as going up, up and down, going along the striations of the muscle, keeping that belly soft. So try some with the foot soft, relaxing the muscle a little bit, and then intensifying by engaging that muscle a little bit, which one feels better. Okay. So now that we've gotten that ball, kind of same idea, same principle with the foam roller, but most of the time you can really pick up, these are not super expensive guys and you can get them online anywhere. So you would do the same thing. This is a lot less intense than that little ball. And you can also do both shins or both calves at once. So now I'm just going to roll those feet out. I'm going to roll the feet in and I'm just going to rock back and forth. If you like, since this is a little less intense than the ball, you can try crossing and lifting. Oh. Uh. Yes. So this, I'm telling you, it's good stuff. It's a love hate relationship with foam rollers and fascia release. You guys, but the more you do it, the less you will hate it and the more you will love it. I promise, but it is not a fun thing at first. And anybody, you guys who know me know that I kind of have a twisted sense of fun from time to time, <laughs> but yeah, this is not necessarily fun. All right. So we got those calves. Let's come in to our child's pose. So our child's pose, we're going to be on our knees and we're going to bring the big toes to touch. So you might need to have space between your knees. If you want to, you can have a big pillow. Um, so that as you fold forward, you can actually rest your tummy and your chest on the pillow. If you've got really tight quadriceps, really tight lower back or tightness in your knees, if you're taking care of your knees, that is a great alternative. Otherwise, we're going to take those hands and we're going to slowly walk them out. So pillow or no pillow, those big toes are touching. And we're just going to relax the weight of the upper body down. So oftentimes the fascia in the hips can be a really big culprit of things that go wrong for the rest of the body or pain in the rest of the body. So we want to be mindful and we're just going to check in. Are you noticing tension or tightness anywhere? So if you are a big time runner, cyclist, hiker, skier, anything where it's kind of repetitive motions and you do this a lot, 
your body needs this so bad. Swimming, anything where it's just a repetitive motion, golf, tennis. So think about your life. Or if you have a tendency to be still, your fascia can lock up, get dehydrated, it gets sticky and entangled. And we want to find that freedom once again. Breathe. Okay, one more good breath. So we're just staying in our child's pose three to five breaths to give our body an opportunity to just really surrender in. Beautiful. Now we're going to rise and we're going to walk those hands back up to that kneeling position. We're going to rise and we're going to bring that right foot forward. If you need something to support you, take it. And we're going to lean in. So our low lunge or crescent lunge, as you come forward and you lengthen through that left hip flexor, find your breath. You can support on the hand. You can have something out in front of you to support with. Do whatever you need to do, guys. This is supposed to be a lot of TLC, okay? So it's not necessarily challenging in a way that we would typically do in our yoga to find that deepest place. We want to really focus on what our body's telling us and work through that tightness in the fascia. If it feels okay to you, release whatever you're holding on to and bring both hands down to the inside of your foot. Now here, if you have a big pillow, a bolster, something that you can place underneath that left thigh, feel free to do that so that you can really surrender into this. If you're feeling really good, guys, you can come down onto your left forearm or possibly your right. So as you come forward and that left thigh gets closer to the ground, we lengthen. And not only are we working that hip flexor on that left side through the front of that left leg, but we're also getting it in through that right hip, inside and outside. So big, big, big deep breaths, guys. Core is strong. Now we're gonna come back up to the palms of the hands. Now you are welcome to stay down onto your forearms if you have that flexibility. But if there is any question, cause we're gonna to start to add a little movement in with that right knee. And we're gonna take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, roll that right knee out as you rotate and take your gaze out over that right shoulder. And then come back to center, draw that right knee back in, right foot flat on the mat. And then as you exhale, rotate. Take that gaze out over that right shoulder and then come back to center. So now I want you, we're going to do five more of these. As you exhale, rotate, let that knee roll out. You roll out to the outside edge of your foot. So just noticing as we add that movement, are there any restrictions? Are you noticing any pain? We don't want to have pain guys, but we want to feel this really good stretch. And you're going to feel this through that left side, through the rib cage and the waist, through that right side, through the hip, through the inner thigh, definitely feeling it through that left leg, through the front of the left leg, through that hip flexor region. Beautiful, let's do one more. Awesome, release it back. Bring one hand on either side of your foot and we're gonna step that right foot back to a kneeling position and come back to that child's pose. Big toes are touching. Do we need that pillow or can we release it down? Finding your breath. Few good breaths here, guys. And let's slowly walk those hands up. Once again, coming up to that kneeling position. Now we're going to take that left leg. If you need support, take it. Otherwise, left leg comes out and we start to lean in. If you have a chair, anything out in front that you need to hold on to, hands can remain on the thigh. I want you to notice how that feels in that hip region. Down the front of that right leg, into that left leg. Our core is strong and our chest is lifted. Breathe. So our low lunge also can be referred to sometimes as dragon pose. So it really depends upon kind of the yoga that you do and just your experience of being around lots of different places called different things, different things. 
So a low lunge, a crescent lunge, dragon. We just want to feel that really nice stretch, guys. Feels good to you? We're going to bring our hands down on the inside of our foot and we're going to get that deeper stretch. Now, if you need to bring in that pillow or that bolster, we're going to do that. We're going to set it just below that right thigh so that we can kind of lean in as much as our body is willing to go. Never to painful, okay? So noticing the difference between pain and a good stretch. We want to find that good stretch. Feels good to you? Coming down onto your forearms. Doesn't feel good, guys? No worries. Move my little friends out of the way here. So either being on the forearms or the hands, we're going to add that movement, okay? We're going to tie the movement with our breath. So keeping that neck soft, keeping the core strong, take a big breath in. And as you exhale, let that left knee roll out to the side as you take your gaze out over that left shoulder. So again, you can be up on the hands and then inhale it back to center. Or you can be down on the forearms. As you exhale, rotate. I get a deeper rotation being up on my hands, but maybe you like it better on the forearms and you're focusing more on the hip. As you exhale, rotate. Inhale it back to center. Be sure you're pulling that left knee back in and that sole of the foot comes back to the mat on those inhales. So we feel this really nice stretch as we rotate through the rib cage. Breathe, that beautiful long stretch down the front of that right leg. Amazing stretch to the inner thigh and that outer hip on that left leg. We've got two more of these guys. So promoting that release of the fascia, that rehydration of the fascia, that sliding of the, of the fascia. And let's come back to center. Bring one hand on either side of your foot, step it back to that kneeling position and sit it back to child's pose. Breathe. Now we've gotten a really good stretch through the hip flexors and through the thighs. So we're really focusing on that lower body today. So we're gonna pull that foam roller in once again. So go ahead and grab it. And we're gonna bring that foam roller and we're gonna place it kind of just right by our knees. And then we're gonna walk ourselves forward to come onto the thighs. Now this one, is fabulous. You can remain on your hands or you can kind of come down into your, onto your forearms. I like this better. It's better for my lower back. You take care of yourself. Make sure you've got plenty of room so that you're not going to bonk your head on the wall if there's a wall in front of you. And I just want you to play with it a little bit. Just rolling on that foam roller, keeping your core strong so that we make sure we keep that back nice and safe. So we're just going to keep the legs steady for the moment and we're rolling. So we're not rocking side to side, just going right along the muscle fibers and notice if there's hope, if there's anything that you're like, Hmm, that could be an issue. Now we're going to start to wiggle our hips and go side to side, a little soft bend in the knees as you start to shift and we're going to roll up and down that foam roller. So as you rock the hips and cross fiber, oh, there's all kinds of things that are in there. So if you feel that chunky feeling, that kind of ropey feeling, yep, that's fascia that's kind of locked up. Again, keeping that core strong. Just pulling yourself forward and back. Breathe. Now, if you do not have a foam roller, guys, but you've got those balls, they're not going to be quite so nice. So foam rollers... <laughs> are not very nice in the first place. They're fantastic because they're super great. But you can also, like if you have two tennis balls, put them together into a sock. And you're going to put that, or a single, it's fine. So you're going to put that underneath one leg. And you start to roll it side to side and front to back. So you're going to kind of have to maneuver yourself a little bit more using that other leg to move back and forth. So start with the softest ball you have, because this is going to get you guys. Making sure there's no pain, but you've got a little more freedom here too. So like I can pull that right knee up a little bit more and then extend it back, pull it up and out. So I'm getting the inner thigh at the same time as getting the top of the thigh. 
that quadricep. And you can stay on. If you find some place where you're like, oh, snap, there it is. You can stay there and just relax the weight of your upper body down. So you'll notice kind of your muscles tense up when you find those spots. Your job is to see if you can let it release. And then just do little tiny rock side to side. So again, ball or foam roller. Just make sure if you've got the ball that you're doing both sides. And we want to spend as much as we can evenly time. So you'll probably find that one side of your body holds a little bit more and the fascia is a little bit more bunched up. That's pretty typical. Um, but it's just as evenly as you can. And you don't have to spend a huge amount of time, guys. Five minutes is amazing. If you can last five minutes, <laughs> um, really, you just want to give yourself consistency. So I'm finding this ropey section. Mm, that needs a little love. So I'm going to make sure I give that love. So again, with that ball, a little more freedom. But I got to say, I do love my foam roller. Okay, my friends, this is a lot. So last Thing we are going to do um, and then we're going to come into a really nice um, butterfly stretch is we're going to do our IT bands so IT bands running right along the outside of your thigh so for this we're going to take our foam roller or again your ball a little nicer a little easier but it's doable for each and we're going to place the foam roller kind of just below your bottom just below your hip bone and your pelvis and we don't want to go any higher than that so just kind of at the very top of the femur, but not the head of the femur, okay? So just below that. And then we're gonna come down, and again, you can be on your hand or you can be on your forearm. I like the forearm just because it's a little bit more level. The top leg is gonna bend, the knee is gonna bend, and it's gonna be your support. So with this, it can be not very nice. So the IT band, guys, is um, something that doesn't typically get a whole lot of love that needs a lot. So when you do give it love, it's gonna respond. Um, so putting as much weight on that top foot to help lift you out of, off of the foam roller is really gonna be your saving grace. If you're getting to the point and you don't really have a whole lot of pain, guys, when this happens and it's not super tight, you can stack your legs. So this extra weight, amazing. If you get to this point, you are in good, 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 good shape and you've really spent some good time on those IT bands. I'm just gonna slide down a little bit. So as we move, I'm gonna use my hands to pull. And again, we're just gonna go right along the muscle fibers. I'm not rolling just yet, just going along. So I wanna stop before my knee and I want to stop before the um, hip. So just getting that IT band. Now I'm going to start to roll it a little bit. So I'm incorporating that cross fibering and that up and down movement. I'm rocking my hip forward and back. Now if you find something, you can just stay there and rock forward and back or just hold. Again, we're using that top leg to minimize if you need to and getting that roll, you can use your foot to kind of push you forward and back, getting that cross fiber by turning your hips and opening, turning and opening. So I try and do like 10 to 12 passes at least. So you be the judge, maybe the first time you get like three and that's okay. Good, and then you can either just roll over or, for my sake, I'm going to switch so you're not staring at my bum. So coming over. And again, you're going to notice that one side. So if you're able to stack those feet, just adding that extra weight. Awesome. So we go up and down. Mm, this actually feels good on this side. Sometimes, guys, it's amazing, but it'll make you sweat almost like you're working out really hard because your muscles are working so hard to fight to release that. Again, if you need to, foot comes down, releasing some of that pressure by pressing through that top foot, rocking side to side. 
making sure you're breathing guys because there is this tendency because it's pretty intense that you hold your breath and you're kind of squeezing your eyes so again you see where I kind of like oh I found something stay there and work on it a bit keeping that core strong so very different than our typical yoga practice guys but yoga is a lot of self-care right so is this and this time that you spend doing fascia release will help your yoga practice it will help your life any kind of sporting that you do it will actually help it so we focused on that lower body today we'll do another one where it's upper body so we're working through the shoulders the back the arms the neck beautiful so coming on out of this set your foam roller or your ball aside and let's come into a butterfly position soles of the feet together and we're going to pull those heels in nice and tight sitting up tall roll those shoulders back and just let those knees open so work in the inner thighs work in the hips work in the groin sitting up nice and tall shoulders drawn back and we're going to begin to hinge it forward long spine Keep reaching through the crown of the head. Just gently pulling with those hands. Really nice release in that lower back. Great stretch for the hips. If you like, extend one arm out in front and then the other and just let yourself round forward. Breathe. So we've worked on the feet, the calves, the hamstrings, those quadriceps and those hips. And slowly let's walk it up. So we are going to finish with those hamstrings and our glutes. So again, ball or foam roller. So that wonderful little butterfly stretch, always so nice. So the foam roller, we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it right underneath our bum. And we're just gonna rock it back and forth. So just noticing, probably not a whole lot going on at this point. So now we're gonna come back to center, hands are behind us, we're gonna cross that right foot up and over that left knee, and we're gonna roll to that right hip. Oh, hello. And now take a hold of that left ankle. Breathe, and we're gonna rock. Forward and back. Now, if you have a ball, same thing. I'm gonna say, probably, doesn't have to be your softest ball. Actually, a softball, not a baseball, but a softball is great. So, balls are gonna be a little bit more intense, guys, because they are smaller than our foam roller, so they're gonna get deeper. So if you need a little more um, weight pressing into that, the floor with that left foot, that's how you're going to minimize and you're going to um, make it a little less intense, okay? So the more body weight that's pushing on that ball, the deeper it's going to get. And you're just going to roll. And you're going to roll around and see what you find. You'll probably find something. If you need both hands down, use both hands. Breathe. So what you find, oh, when you find it, hold here. Now, I want you to notice I'm not sinking into that shoulder, but I'm staying tall and strong. And you can move. So the sneaky thing is those entanglements, it can start to let go, but then it'll shift and it'll move on you. So when you do find something and then all of a sudden it feels like it went away, move just slightly and see. And just keep following it. Keep following it. So that glute, guys, oh, it's going to love you. Probably not right away. <laughs> Mine's like, hmm, why are we here? It's because you need it. Good. And then we're gonna switch to the other side. So we cross that left foot up and over the right knee. And we're just gonna roll. So you can be on that foam roller, guys. Love the foam roller. Balls, 
going to get you in a little bit deeper. Hands can be behind you or for more intensity. Taking that right hand to that left knee or left um, ankle, wherever it feels good to you. And just roll. Front to back, side to side. Find that trigger point. Right? So those trigger points, guys, you've heard that in massage, right? Trigger points are fascia. So a lot of times people think it's their muscles that are tight. They can be. But generally, it's going to be that fascia that's locked up. And we're just trying to get it free. That free flowing, allowing for more mobility, sustainability in your exercising, in your sports, in your life. Breathe. I hope it feels good, guys. I know it's. I know it can be. Um, it hurts so good, pain, rather than a hurt so bad. If it's a hurt so bad, guys, you're not doing yourself any good. Okay, so really be nice. Awesome. All right, coming off of those glutes. Last but not least, those hamstrings. We gotta lengthen them right, but now we gotta give them a little love. So the hamstrings can be kind of tricky. Um, again, you can use your ball, you can use the foam roller. I like to cross my leg and lift. And this time you're gonna roll kind of from the back of the knee up to the bum. So we just did the bum, and now we do that hamstring. And again, you're just gonna kind of roll side to side. So what do we do if we're taking care of our shoulders? And this is not a great place to be. You're gonna bring your hands closer forward and you're gonna lift. So it's gonna be a shorter range of motion as opposed to being able to really kind of push it out. If this is not great for you guys, come up. Find a place that you can support with both hands. So maybe you put a chair on each side and you're gonna use that chair. Now again, a little less range of motion so maybe you come forward and hinge forward. This is gonna give you that length in those hamstrings, that stretch in your bum, that release in that lower back, and it's also gonna put some pressure on those hamstrings. So we're not gonna get that cross fibering nearly as much if we can't come back onto those hands, but we're taking care of our shoulders, right? So we can't do something that's gonna cause more pain to another part of our body. We gotta take care of ourselves. And maybe you just, you know, gotta go get a massage instead of doing it on yourself. That's always a beautiful thing too. So switching sides when you're ready and you can just do that cross fiber, that up and down. Keeping that core strong, just being mindful of the wrists and the shoulders. And breathe. And we're gonna finish with our last stretch here, my friends as a beautiful forward fold. So we just gave those hamstrings and the glutes a little bit of love, now they're super ready. So flex your feet, sit up nice and tall. I want you to really focus on keeping your back long and straight as best you can. Reach to the sky, and as you exhale, begin to hinge it forward. So as we hinge forward, we keep that nice long spine as long as we can until we release the tummy down and release the head down. Now we're going to walk those hands down towards the legs, down towards the feet as far as we're able. If you can reach past your feet, maybe wrap the crook of the wrists around the outside of your feet. Using the strength of your arms to lengthen the spine, reaching the crown of the head towards the toes and drawing those toes back towards the crown of the head. Now I want you to notice. Is there tension going on in your body? Is there intensity? I want you to see if you can release some of that tension, some of that resistance. And just breathe. Inhale, reach it out. Sit up nice and tall. And release your hands down by your side. I want to thank you guys for joining me today for a very not typical yoga practice, but one that hopefully your body is like, oh my goodness, that felt amazing. 
Um, so really focus on the lower body today. Uh, we will come back and do the upper body as well because it is really important and so beneficial. Um, I hope you just walk on cloud nine today and are feeling fantastic. But I just want to thank you for taking the time, um, for spending it with me, for learning, exploring, um, maybe trying something brand new. So um, be well, my friend. Take care. And until the next time, namaste.